Now we continue on with our reading for today. This comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. As Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. This is a great story that we just heard. The encounter of Jesus with this rich young man is a marvelous story that we're going to spend some time considering this morning. Going to do so under four different points that come along. And the first point is to remind us through this story that life is filled with many questions. Life is filled with questions Hey, isn't it? <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> and there are many more that will come to us this day because they are there every day of our life. Questions. Sometimes the questions are directed at us, as in this story. This question is directed to Jesus. But there are other times when we become the questioner. We're the one who asks the question, as this rich young man does in this story. But whether we are young or old, whether we are a 1045 contemporary worshiper or a more 8 o'clock traditional worshiper or instead of Sunday, we come to Saturday night sometimes. There are questions. No matter what our circumstances in life, every day, life is filled with questions. And this morning comes a very important question to us. Husband suddenly dies and the wife has some serious questions she has to consider as life moves forward for her, for the rest of the family. A tragedy occurs to somebody close to us, one of our friends, maybe a family member, and everybody is asking questions concerning health, concerning why. We don't always have answers, but we almost always have questions. This rich young man comes to Jesus asking a rather ultimate kind of question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Very serious question. A very important question. So why is this story included in the life of Jesus? just so we have a chance to hear this man's question. Because his question is a question for all of us. It's an eternal question about everlasting life, the life that is to come. And his question reminds us, reminds everyone who reads this story, there is more to life than just this physical well-being. Just today, or even tomorrow, or the rest of this week, there is more to life. Because there is more to physical, there is more to life than just the physical. There's also the spiritual. There is a life yet to come. There is a life that we call eternal or everlasting. There is a life, a life that extends our living with Jesus. And that question reminds us of all of that. Let me ask you a question, though. And it'll probably just be the first of several that gets asked during this message. But 
Let me ask you if you've ever asked yourself this question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Not ask a pastor, not ask a teacher, not ask an elder of the church, but is this a question that you have ever asked yourself? Because it's an important question. It's an ultimate kind of question. It's a question that reminds us of the important things of our living. And it's a question we need to ask of ourselves. But the story is also a sad story. In fact, that's some of the last words of this story is the man was saddened by the words that Jesus speaks back to him. The ultimate question receives an ultimate challenge as Jesus challenges him. And as the man hears that challenge, he is saddened. And that makes for a sad ending to this story. Now, if you and I are going to come to a different ending, as we ourselves come to Jesus with this same question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? If we're going to find a different ending to the story, we need to consider not just that life is filled with questions, but we need to consider some of the other lessons that we can learn from this story. And one of those lessons comes to us as a reminder, our next note. And that is a reminder that life or stuff can never replace faith. This is a story about stuff, about this rich young man's stuff, his possessions. And he has many of them. They are filling his life, even as our possessions fill our lives. Troy and I, the last couple of weeks, have been in the process of moving into a new home, into a home that is new to us, probably is a little bit more accurate a saying. So we've been doing the sorting, doing the packing, lots of questions, as you can only imagine if you've done that recently. One of the more frequent questions that comes up is, are you taking that And I won't tell you who gets asked that question a lot. <laughs> but it's a reminder to us, if you move, we're at to the point of having filled up a garage with boxes and now moving all of those boxes and have filled up another garage with boxes, the garage in the new place. Have you ever put all of your stuff into one pile? What do you find out when you do that? You find out you have lots of stuff. I mean, those boxes are almost reaching the ceiling when they get piled up all in one place like that. That doesn't often happen to us, and so we don't get those reminders as to just how much stuff we have. But we have a lot of stuff. Jesus is not talking down to us and our stuff. He's not against the riches of life. Neither is he promoting the poverty of life. But we have to acknowledge that God blesses abundantly as he gives to us. None of us have ever lacked as we pray and give us this day our daily bread. That continues to fill our lives in numerous ways. And this rich young man comes before us with that reminder that stuff can never replace faith. Stuff can be an obstacle that gets in our way at times from the living of this faith. But stuff can never replace faith. This story tells us that this man is a good man also. It's not just a man who has accumulated a lot of things. He is also a good man. He is also a moral man. He knows God's commandments. And from his youth, he affirms that 
the six commandments that Jesus mentions, he has kept all of those. Upon a rather close scrutiny, I'm not sure that I could voice those words. I have kept all of those from my youth. But that's what he says to Jesus. So he knows God's commandments. He has worked to walk on the path that God has prescribed. We would call him a religious man, a moral man, a good man. He is identified and a rich man. All of those things. And yet he still comes asking Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life. There seems in his life, despite his goodness, despite his knowledge, despite that which is in his life, there seems to be something missing that brings him to Jesus. That God's word says he ran to Jesus, falls on his knees and asks him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The stuff that he has in his life. That stuff has not provided with him something that he is looking for. That's what stuff can do for us too. In Bible class, from the reading in Hebrews, that's today's appointed second reading, we were talking about the deceitfulness of sin. And some of the deceitfulness of the sin that is attached to us is that some of the stuff in this life can fill up the holes in our life. And that's a deceitfulness. Because it can't. And it doesn't. The stuff of this life does not fill up the holes in our life. Because stuff can never replace faith. Faith and trust in the giver who gives all good things. But yet we think it can. And so we accumulate. We accumulate stuff, the stuff of life that fills our homes, our garages, and our storage areas. But we also fill our hearts with stuff that we think is going to bring meaning and satisfaction to our living. We fill our minds up with more learning and education, trying to understand things we haven't understood previously. Again, Jesus is not speaking against any of those things, whether it's the stuff of our head or the stuff of our heart or the stuff of our living. But he would remind us that all of that can be obstacles to us and to the living of this faith because stuff can never replace faith. Our third point this morning as we consider this story is that everyone lacks one thing. It may be chocolate chips in the chocolate chip cookie recipe, but those chocolate chips are important to that recipe. Every one of us lacks one thing. As Jesus speaks to this rich young man, he points him in the direction in which we all struggle. He tells him to go and sell and to give. Go and sell and give and then come and follow me. Go and sell and give. In fact, what does Jesus say there? Go and sell all that you have and give. See, trying to tell us. Stuff likes to attach itself to us. We become rather fond of the things we have. That's why it becomes difficult to ask, answer that question. Are you taking that with me? Because we grow fond of that very easily in our lives. Because that's what stuff does. It attaches to us. It attaches to our hearts. It attaches to our mind. It attaches to us. Jesus asks us, if you're going to come to me, you need to be empty of all of that stuff. You need to seek him. God, 
before anything else. It's the first commandment reference that Jesus points this man to. And that's the one he struggled with. That's the one we all struggle with. That in this life, there can be nothing else. There can be no more important one in my living than the one who has given to me life. Amos the prophet says in chapter 5 of Amos, seek the Lord and live. That's where Jesus is pointing this young rich man also. Seek God and live. But to do that, get rid of all the attachments in your life that interfere with that path to me. Because that's how the stuff, the good things of our life, that's always an awakening that even the good things that God gives to us can become difficult obstacles in our life. We have a wonderful job, but it requires a commitment. And that commitment interferes with our relationships within the family, interferes with our relationships of faith, maybe even within the church. Good things that God gives to us, the stuff of this life can become obstacles to following and being the disciple that Jesus would desire us to be. We all lack one thing. We all fall short, is how Romans puts it for us. We all, we can have 99, but we're short of 100. We can pile up those things, good things, needed things, necessary things, but we still lack one thing. And that one thing, as we move to our last point, is a reminder that Jesus is not just one thing. It's not that we gather together 99 things, we realize, oh, I still need Jesus, and we add that one thing of faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is not just one thing. Jesus is everything. He is all that we need in this life. Everything. And the rich young man is saddened because Jesus points him and challenges him to release the grasp that his stuff has on him and to cling to Christ and his cross alone. And that's where we struggle too. To find the joy of this Christian life is to find that spirit working in us that enables us to let go of all of that which would cling to us and to find in Jesus Christ more than what we need for the living of each and every day. Because in him alone we find forgiveness. And in him alone, we find the peace that passes all understanding. And in him alone, we are connected to one another as the people of God to be encouraged in this life. When the walk becomes difficult, he fills our lives with the abundance of good things so that we can share with our neighbors, especially when they struggle or are in need as we witness the light of Christ in us shining out to those who are around us. Everything. Jesus is everything to us. And he has a gift. Because of his life and death, he has a gift for us. A gift that is everlasting and a gift that is eternal. What must I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what has he done? Becomes a better question for us. Because he has done it all. Again, as we come to the fall, we are challenged by leaders in the congregation, by our pastors and teachers to find some time to join a small group for six weeks as we have our congregational Bible study again. Begins this coming Saturday for six weeks 
We gather together. There are groups for every day, so please stop by the table in the narthex and find which best fits you, that good gift of time. <laughs> Don't let it become an obstacle in your life because God has a gift for you. I have no doubt that through these six weeks, God has a gift for you if you can but join one of those groups. The theme is forgiveness. Pastor Zender started us on this path two years ago when together with one another we did the red letter challenge. And now he is going through the five steps that were a part of that lesson. And this second step is forgiveness. Even as God's people, we have a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn. You have a lot to learn about forgiveness. Not only the forgiveness that we receive from Jesus Christ, not only coming to realize just how great is our need for that forgiveness, but how then, as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, do I ask Him to forgive my trespasses as I forgive the trespasses of others? For all of us, that too is a struggle. How not just do I receive God's forgiveness, but how do I share that forgiveness with others? It may be a word, maybe an incident, maybe something long time ago, it may be something very present, something that is blocking the forgiveness that God has given you of reaching out to someone else because it hurts a little bit to think about what that one said or what happened to you. That's why we need to come together and join in the study about forgiveness because the one who gives us his forgiveness, Jesus Christ, is everything. Not just one thing that we lack, but he is everything. And as we trust and believe in him, the gift that he shares with us, the gift that he gives to us, the gift that only he can give to us is the gift of eternal life. And in Christ's precious name, amen.